and scripture song broadcast. Sorry about that. Uh, had some connection issues, but hopefully uh, that's been resolved. Amen. So I uh, would like to greet you as always in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world, and hope and pray that he's your Lord and Savior today. And so today's topic will be titled, Equally Yoked. Before we get started on that, I'm going to sing today's scripture song, which is a short one. I know the last couple of days have been more uh, longer ones, but praise the Lord uh, for Brother Dean and Sister Patty writing these scripture songs and putting them together to music. Amen. And so today's scripture song will be from Proverbs 15.33. And so press play here and sing along with Brother Dean and Sister Patty. Amen. Proverbs 15.33 The, the fear, fear of the, the Lord, Lord is the instruction, instruction of wisdom, wisdom and, and before, before honor is humility. Amen. The fear, the fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom. The honor is humility. The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom. Before honor is humility. The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom. And before honor is humility. Amen. Praise the Lord. So let's always make sure we have a humble spirit. Praise God and uh, the fear of the Lord will is the instruction of wisdom. Amen. Praise God for that. All right. So I'll try that again towards the end of the broadcast. But now it's time to get into today's topic titled Equally Yoked for this 28th day of April. And we are wrapping up the month of April, two more days after today, and then go into the month of May. All right, so today's passage is from 2 Corinthians six fourteen and 17. And it says, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion hath light with darkness? Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Second Corinthians six fourteen and 17. And today's author is D.B. That is the initials for uh, David Brown. And not the David Brown from uh, Deland uh, uh, Bible Baptist Church, but a different David Brown. And he's the pastor of Central Baptist Church in Decatur, Illinois. So let me read you what he wrote today. On this topic of equally yoked, he says, God tells his people the importance of being yoked equally versus unequally. The word yoked means to be connected in a sense of merger, oneness, unity, pulling together in the same direction, equally matched, having the same values, blended and like-minded. God tells us that we are the people of light and not of darkness, right? Darkness is Satan's habitation and dominion. God informs us that we cannot, or at uh, Ephesians 5, 7 through 13. Uh, hold, hold on a second. I, let's see. I'm go back and read that. It says, uh, God informs us that we cannot, or at Ephesians 5, 7 through 13, is a power, powerful revelation of God's instructing his people to leave or remove oneself from all connections to darkness regarding uh, fellowship and voluntary involvement. We are called children of light. Ephesians 5, 8 and 1 uh, and 1 Thessalonians 5, 5 are the references. Amen. So, all right, that didn't... Uh, really make uh, much sense. He went from saying God informs us that we cannot, and then he puts in parentheses, or at Ephesians 5, 7 through 13, uh, is a powerful revelation of God's instructing his people to uh, leave or remove oneself from all connections to darkness regarding fellowship and voluntary involvement. Uh, we are call, called children of light. Ephesians 5, 8 and 1 Thessalonians 5, 5. Okay, uh, maybe he meant to word that differently, but I uh, hope you understood that. 
I had a little trouble because he went one direction and then he all of a sudden he puts in parentheses something else. So, okay, I mean, it kind of goes together. All right, anyway, uh, hopefully that makes sense to you. All right, so continue on. He says, the doctrine of separation is a Bible doctrine we need uh, and it is of much importance. So again, the doctrine of separation is a Bible doctrine we need and it is of much importance. When you get saved, Christ came to, to you and rescued you from Satan's bondage and the kingdom of darkness. And that's Colossians 1.13 is the reference. And Christ then translated you into his own kingdom of light. Hallelujah. You became a child of God. Amen. Now God wants you to enjoy the freedom of the light. It is referred to in John 8.12 as the light of life. Real living in where God's abundance is found and is discovered in the light of the truth. Amen. So, praise the Lord. So, let's uh, make sure we're equally equally yoked and not uh, unequally yoked with uh, unbelievers. Amen. We're to witness to them and uh, tell them about Jesus and, and try to get them saved. But we're not to go out and hang out with them and do the things they do. And even uh, some believers in Christ that have gone... Uh, by the wayside, not supposed to really fellowship with them, supposed to try to encourage them to get back on the right path, but not go hang out with them if they're doing things they shouldn't be doing and uh, getting caught up in that stuff, amen, because then you can fall, and what happens if every Christian falls because they're hanging out with somebody that fell, and and then you end up falling because they fell, that wouldn't be good, so if uh, they fell and they're doing carnal things, then you're to to not be equally uh, yoked with them, amen? So that can go for believers and unbelievers. So there might be some believers out there that are not living like Christians should and living carnal and worldly, and so we need to try to stay away from them, try to encourage them from a distance. But if they don't want to come back to the Lord in the ways of of uh, godly things, then we're to keep on going and keep on running the race and uh, uh, keep on fighting the good fight, amen? So, all right. Okay, so that is the end of the topic on the, uh, being equally yoked. All right, so now it's time to read today's Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 28. And verse 1 says, The wicked flee when no man pursueth, but the righteous are bold as a lion. Amen. For the transgression of a land may... Uh, uh, let me reread that. For the transgression of a land, many are the princes thereof. But by a man of understanding and knowledge, the state thereof shall be prolonged. A poor man that oppresseth the poor is like a sweeping rain, which leaveth no food. They that forsake the law praise the wicked, but such as keep the law contend with him. Evil men understand not judgment, but they that seek the Lord understand all things. Amen. Let's make sure we're always seeking the Lord so we can understand all things. Uh, better is the poor that walketh in his uprightness than he that is perverse in his ways, though he be rich. Whoso keepeth the law is a wise son, but he that is a companion of riotous men shameth his father. He that by, uh, he that by usury and unjust gain increaseth his substance, he shall gather it for him that will pity the poor. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be abomination. Wow. Uh, whoso causeth the righteous to go astray in an evil way, he shall fall himself into his own pit, but the upright shall have good things in possession. The rich man is wise in his own conceit, but the poor that hath understanding searcheth him out. When righteous men do rejoice, there is great glory. But when the wicked rise, a man is hidden. Uh, he that covereth his sins shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. Happy is the man that feareth alway, but he that hardeneth his heart shall fall into mischief. As a roaring lion and a raging bear, so is a wicked ruler over the poor people. 
The prince that wanteth understanding is also a great oppressor, but he that hateth covetousness shall prolong his days. A man that doeth violence to the blood of any person shall flee to the pit. Let no man stay him. Whoso walketh uprightly shall be saved, but he that is perverse in his way shall fall at once. He that tilleth his land shall have plenty of bread, but he that followeth after vain persons shall have poverty enough. A faithful man shall abound with blessings, but he that maketh haste to be rich shall not be innocent. To have respect to persons is not good, for for a piece of bread that man will transgress. He that ha uh, hasteneth to be rich hath an evil eye, and considereth not that poverty shall come upon him. He that rebuketh a man afterwards shall find more favor than he that flattereth with his with the tongue. Whoso robbeth his father or his mother, and saith, It is no transgression, the same is the companion of a destroyer. He that is of a proud heart stirreth up strife, but he that putteth his trust in the Lord shall be made fat. <laughs> yeah, uh, he that trusteth in his own heart is a fool, right? So stop tr trusting in your own heart, and don't be a fool. But whoso walketh wisely, he shall be delivered. He that giveth unto the poor shall not lack, but he that uh, hideth his eye shall have many a curse. When the wicked rise, men hide themselves, but when they perish, the righteous increase. Amen. And that is the end of Proverbs chapter 28. All right, so put that over there for a minute and get the hymn story going here. All right, so do this really quick. All right, so today is another hymn story uh, from that was written by Isaac Watts, so we'll continue on. The story of Isaac Watts and his life, and so today's hymn is uh, titled, Jesus Shall Reign, and it's got five stanzas, so I'll read you the stanzas first, and then we'll get into the passage and the story. Alright, so it says here, Isaac Watts, and then John uh, Hatton were the hymn writers here, and so let me press play on the thing here, and play this as background music, so here we go says here in stanza one of this uh, hymn, Jesus Shall Reign, it says, Jesus shall reign wherever the sun, uh, wherever, uh, wherever the sun does its uh, successive journeys run, his kingdom spread from shore to shore, till moon shall wax and wane no more. Uh, to him shall endless prayer be made, and endless praises crown his head. His name, like sweet perfume, shall rise with every morning sacrifice. Uh, people and realms of every tongue dwell on his love with sweetness song, with sweetest song, and infinite voices shall proclaim their early blessings on his name. Blessings abound wherever he reigns. The prisoner leaps to loose his chains. The weary find uh, eternal rest, and all the sons of want are blessed. And stanza five says, Let every creature rise and bring his grateful honors to our king. Angels descend uh, with songs again, and earth repeat the loud Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right, so that was the hymn, and now we'll read the passage that's tied to this hymn. And it is, uh, says here, Jesus shall reign, 1719, and the hymn, or the passage is from Psalm 72, 17. So Psalm 70, 72, 17. So let me get there. 72 and verse 17 says... Uh, his name shall endure forever. His name shall be continued as long as the sun, and men shall be blessed in him. All nations shall call him blessed. Amen. So that is the passage there from Psalm 72, 17. And now we'll get into the actual story here. Let me put this back to the beginning so we don't run out. I'm in the middle of this. Hold on a second. 
All right, so here is the story behind the hymn, Jesus Shall Reign, by Isaac Watts. It says here, while living on the Abney estate, Isaac devoted himself to a massive project, adapting the Book of Psalms for Christian worship in 1719. Uh, the Psalms of, Psalms of David uh, imitated in the language of the New Testament was published. In it, Watts worked his way through most of the 150 Psalms, uh, paraphrasing them, injecting them with New Testament truth, and framing them in singing form. He explained his approach with these words, uh, where, the psalmist, uh, where the psalmist describes religion by the fear of God, I have often joined faith and love to it. Uh, where he speaks of the pardon of sin through the mercies of God, I have added the merits of a savior. Where he talks of sacrificing goats or bullocks, I rather choose to mention the sacrifice of Christ, the Lamb of God, uh, Isaac says, uh, where he promise, promises abundance of wealth, honor, and long life. I have changed some of these typical blessings for grace, glory, and life eternal, which are brought to light by the gospel and promised in the New Testament. Several of these uh, have become favorites that have uh, withstood the ages. Uh, his rendition of Psalm 72, for example, has been called the first missions hymn, Jesus shall reign wherever the, uh, wherever the sun. This, this hymn played a role in the life of Eric uh, Lydell, Eric Lydell, Scottish Olympic hero of 1924 games in Paris, who became a missionary to China with the London Missionary Society. His departure from Edinburgh was never to be forgotten. His friends escorted him in a uh, festooned carriage from Scottish Congregational Church to Waverley uh, Station, where multitudes had gathered before boarding the train. Eric spoke to the crowd, saying he was going abroad to endeavor to do his part in trying to unify the countries of the world under Christ. Amen. Uh, let our motto be, Christ for the world, for the world needs Christ. Amen. So that's a good motto. Christ for the world, for the world needs Christ. He shouted. Uh, he then led in two verses of Jesus shall reign wherever the sun, if on the, that memorable day, Eric had sung all the verses of Jesus shall reign, he would have come to this one. The saint shall flourish in his days, dressed in robes of joy and praise. Peace like a river from his throne shall flow to nations yet unknown. Amen. And so I encourage you to go uh, look up uh, that uh, uh, story about Eric Lydell. And he became a missionary to China. Amen. And there's a little note down here. Eric Lydell served courageously in China until his death in 1945 in a Jap Japanese internment camp. Amen. So that is the end of the hymn story. And it goes from Isaac Watts to talking about Eric Lydell. Amen. So go check out uh, uh, that missionary uh, in his story. Amen. And so that was a good little uh, hymn story there on the hymn, Jesus Shall Reign. All right. So uh, that is the end of today's hymn story. So tomorrow's hymn story will be another hymn from Isaac Watts titled, O oh God, Our Help in Ages Past. Amen. And that was uh, 1719 that was written. And the passage is from Psalm 90, verses 1 through 2. All right, so that is the end of today's hymn story. So go check out that hymn, and I'm sure if you'd like to learn more about Isaac Watts, you can do so. And also Eric Lydell, who was a missionary to China, who was, he started out in the Olympics, and then he went and uh, became a missionary, and uh, his duty to go tell the world about Jesus. Amen. All right, so now it's time to sing today's scripture song one more time, and then we'll wrap it up. Amen. All right, so today is the 28th, and today's uh, scripture song is from 5, uh, Proverbs 15.33. All right.
Let's get started here. Proverbs 15, 33. The, the fear, fear of the, the Lord, Lord is, is the instruction of wisdom, of wisdom and, and before, before honor, honor is humility. The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom, and before honor is humility. The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom, and before honor is humility. The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom, and before honor is humility. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. Well, that will about wrap it up for today's uh, broadcast. But before I go, as always, I give you tomorrow's scripture song and then uh, devotional topic, and then uh, so let me give you tomorrow's scripture song. And tomorrow's the twenty ninth. And it's from Psalms 68, 19. And it says, Blessed be the Lord, who daily loadeth us with benefits, even the God of our salvation, Selah. Amen. So that will be tomorrow's scripture song. And tomorrow's topic will be titled, Let God Know. Amen. And the passage is from Philippians 4, 6. So that will be tomorrow's devotional topic. And of course, we'll read... Psalms 29, or Psalms 29, Proverbs 29, and then, of course, uh, tomorrow's uh, hymn story will be from the hymn, uh, O God, Our Help in Ages Past, another one from Isaac Watts, and also William Croft, and so that will be tomorrow's uh, hymn story, and let's see, we have how many more from Isaac, so we have today, or tomorrow, and tomorrow, so one, two... Three more from Isaac Watts, and then we'll start into a batch of uh, hymn, hymn songs and stories from Charles Wesley. Amen. So he will be the next one we'll be covering, Charles Wesley, after we're done with Isaac Watts. So, amen. So a couple more days of um, some more stories about Isaac Watts and his hymns that he's written. And then going into a batch of stories about Charles Wesley. Amen. All right, well, that'll about wrap it up for today. So thank you for watching, and may the Lord richly bless you. Until next time, and if you'd like to get a box of these devotionals, they come in a box of 10, and they're available on this website at www.timgreenministries.org. And, of course, Brother Dean and Sister Patty have written all these scripture songs uh, here, and they're available on the website here at www.dailyscripturesongs.com. And you can read their prayer letter and find out what's going on. Uh, Sister Patty's on her way back to uh, the United States from being in Guyana for a few weeks. And so pray for them and pray that they can get on the mission field full time. Uh, hopefully they're trying to do that in June if everything works out. So and uh, VBS will be going on there this summer. And so pray pray for those that will be going. Um, uh, so amen. And uh, so if you... Uh, would like to go and check that out you can uh perhaps contact brother dean and find out how you can go there and help out with that or uh try the uh 30 day boot camp that he has going on out there you can contact him about that i'm sure he would uh, love to explain it to you if you're interested in being a missionary uh and try that out amen all right so uh that'll about do it for today so uh thanks again for watching remember jesus saves believe on him amen bye for now